Hello and welcome to Ecoterrorism. I'm Zainab Bailoun. Much has been said about global waste and its effect on the environment. For example, the BBC says it has been estimated that 1.3 billion tons of food goes to waste globally each year. What is the situation of other waste? And what is the solution in this regard? For more on this issue, I'm joined in the studio by Dr. Dani Abed from the Faculty of Agronomy at the Lebanese University. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Before starting our discussion with Dr. Abed, let's take a quick look at this report. The world's cities currently generate around 1.3 billion tons of solid waste a year, or 1.2 kilograms per city dweller per day, nearly half of which comes from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. The number is expected to rise to 2.2 billion tons by 2025, or 1.4 kilograms per person. The World Bank estimates that China's urbanites will throw away 1.4 billion tons in 2025, up from 520 million tons today. By contrast, America's urban rubbish pile will increase from 620 million tons to 700 million tons. Globally, solid waste management costs will increase from today's annual $205.4 billion to about $375.5 billion in 2025. Cost increases will be most severe in low-income countries, more than five-fold increases, and lower middle-income countries, more than four-fold increases. The global impacts of solid waste are growing fast. Solid waste is a large source of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas that is particularly impactful in the short term. This specific issue is highly contributing to the increase in the temperature of the globe. In this regard, it is seen that a city which cannot effectively manage its waste is likely unable to manage more complex services such as health, education, or transportation. Unlike high-income countries, low-income countries continue nowadays to spend most of their solid waste management budgets on waste collection, with only a fraction going towards disposal. It is worth mentioning that the growth in waste quantities is fastest in Asia than any other continent. Accordingly, Asia, like much of the world, continues to have a majority of organics and paper in its waste stream. So, Dr. Abed, according to the World Bank, each person on this planet produces daily around 1.2 kilograms of waste. So, what are the main components of the waste produced that is known as municipal solid waste, on the other hand? Actually, when I was speaking about municipal solid waste, uh, each one of us uh, is, is producing uh, mainly, mainly organic. Half mm -hmm. of these 1.2 is uh, organic uh, material. And the rest will be uh, cardboard, uh, glass, aluminium. And now we can add a major uh, component, which is uh, the electronic waste. It starts with, uh, with the batteries of the mobiles or even the mobiles we are, we are using and also much of the CDs and the USBs we are, uh, we are using uh, these days. Mm -hmm. What makes them particularly dangerous or bad? Uh, well, uh, their dangerosity uh, has two components. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all is the, the volume and the surface they are uh, occupying. This is, uh, this is one. And uh, second, uh, you know that when they are not properly managed, most of these weights, they are, uh, uh, they, they change, they are modified, they contain sometimes some harmful uh, uh, elements and these harmful ele elements are released freely in the nature. They are polluting air, they are polluting uh, uh, the sea and the, and the rivers, and, and they are also polluting the the soil. Mm -hmm. So these are some negative effects. What about some positive effects of uh, s supposedly waste that actually uh, come out from what we see every day? Uh, well, personally, I don't see much uh, positive in <laughs> the quantity of uh, of uh, waste we are we are producing. Surely, when we are speaking about wa waste, we are speaking a very big industry, and many people are working uh, are working on this uh, in this industry. But uh, the majority of uh, the waste we are, we are producing, uh, there are hundreds and even thousands of people are, are working in order to, to help us mm -hmm. get, get rid of, uh, of, this, uh, of this waste and reduce the bad effect we are making when we are producing this amount of waste. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the environmental effect, you would say there is solely a negative effect? 
it is solely a negative effect uh, that waste does have. Exactly. Mm. So in terms of offsetting the economic uh, positive benefits, are there other options that could provide economic benefits to people other than uh, getting rid of waste in the way that we typically see? Uh, actually, when we have all this kind of, uh, all this amount of waste, uh, and as I said, there are many people uh, working in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this industry, many people are trying to take benefit and recycle all this, uh, all this waste. So you see people are collecting plastics mm -hmm. and they are re trying to recycle, uh, to recycle uh, them. Actually, you know, the main thing, when, when plastics were first uh, invented, uh, Mr. Plastic went around the world and said, I invented something that will last forever. Uh, and he was right. He invented something that will last forever. And you know that plastics would remain 400 or 500 years in, uh, in the nature and would not, it's not degrade, degradable. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that when we are producing this amount of, uh, this amount of waste, there is not, uh, you, uh, on Earth now, there is not no much surface to put, to put this, uh, to put this waste, to have this waste uh, around. And I'm not saying a secret now that many people are speaking about the uh, one more continent mm -hmm. that is made with, with plastics. If you look around on, uh, on the seas, you can see the, um, the plastics that are there, they are gathered. And t today we have a big continent that is made only and mainly with plastics. Mm -hmm. So let's say we talk about the principle of the polluter paying for his, his or her own, own waste. Who exactly is responsible for this? What about governments and what sort of role should they play in this principle of paying for your own waste? Polluter pays is uh, a very important principle, but it's also uh, each one can explain it on its, on its own. Uh, that meaning that polluter pays is that I'm responsible for the waste that I'm, that I'm producing. And that means that I have to pay uh, for everything I'm producing, mm -hmm. uh, for the government to be able to uh, to manage it properly. I will give you an example. For example, if I'm buying uh, tires for the car, uh, usually the price of the uh, of this uh, of these tires have to include also the final disposal of these of these tires. But this unfortunately is not is not happening because, in a way, to whom shall I pay this extra? to the uh, uh, factory who made these tires or for the one who sold me these tires or for the government who will be finally uh, disposing, disposing these, uh, these tires. So in my opinion, polluter pays is very important. Mm -hmm. We are speaking today about something else. Uh, pay as much as you pollute or pay as much as you uh, produce produce waste and in a way we have each one has to pay mm. for each extra kilo we are producing uh, extra kilo of waste we are producing so in a way uh, if one really to uh, to apply polluter pays it will be like this uh, for each uh, for each factory for each company for each even small office uh, we have to pay an extra tax for every extra kilogram of waste we are producing in order to enable uh, the municipality or anybody who's taking care of our waste to be able to manage it properly. Mm -hmm. So before we continue uh, talking about this issue, here are some facts about global waste. 20% of the food we buy goes in the garbage instead of being eaten. And an average family of four people throws out about $590 per year in meat, fruit, vegetables and grain products. Recycling 1,000 kilograms of aluminum saves enough energy to heat typical homes for 10 years. And over a period of one day, a slowly dripping tap could fill a bathtub. And the commercial sector uses almost 70% of all electricity produced. So, Dr. Abed, what do you have to say about these points? Uh, exactly. If you, uh, for one ton of aluminium, the, uh, the fact that you, you mentioned, uh, we also say that if we didn't have uh, uh, the recycling of aluminium, we wouldn't find this, uh, this material anymore on Earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, recycling of the aluminium is, is very important. It's, it, take, uh, it, it saves a lot of energy. It saves a lot of energy of uh, taking out this aluminium from, uh, from, uh, from Earth. And something very important about aluminium is that we can recycle it forever. I mean, it's recyclable again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, it is uh, the only reason we can find aluminium t 
today on Earth is that we can recycle it. Mm -hmm. What about the, uh, the, par the part where the commercial sector uses almost 70% of all electricity produced? Uh, yes, just to tell you that uh, w we, can, we can save a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we can save a lot if we think properly with the uh, Should with we be targeting specifically the sector when we look at uh, changing the way that we, uh, we address this issue? Uh, this is an important one. Um, uh, I don't know if to say fortunately or unfortunately, whenever we are speaking about the waste, we go towards children and mm. we go towards education with in smaller ages. Uh, I think it is, it is important, but it will take time. I mean, children we are targeting today will not affect, uh, uh, will not see the change before 20, 20 years. So yes, in a way we have to go towards the sector you, you just mentioned to have uh, some very quick, very quick results. Mm -hmm. So who are the main polluters today? Uh, the main polluters today are uh, the big factories, mm -hmm. uh, the transportation sector as a main uh, polluter, especially for the... For Across the, the world? For, for the air, yes, uh, airplanes are the, m uh, the most polluting way of transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, surely it's... It it pollutes mainly we have air air pollution whenever we are speaking about uh, solid uh, solid waste and the pollution of the of the uh, land and pollution of the uh, of the of the seas and uh, and river uh, the municipal solid uh, waste uh, though they don't uh, represent a big uh, percentage of the global waste produced but their main problem is that they are scattered. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever we are speaking about factories, they produce a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of waste. But all these wastes are in a way managed and we can manage them because they are in one place. Municipal solid waste are scattered. Mm -hmm. They are almost everywhere. And uh, people are producing every day uh, in, w in one day, as we, you said, 1.2 kilograms is uh, if we count them with uh, six billions that uh, or seven billions that we are that we are today, they, this makes tons and tons of uh, of waste that are produced produced daily. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abed. We'll be back to you right after we take this quick short break. Stay tuned. Around the world, outside the mainstream, anywhere, everywhere. A media of your land, of your creation. A new media and a new era. Will it take the lead in the future? I believe so. This is Underground. Underground, when vague turns to clarity. Welcome back. The next report which will shed light on the relation between global waste and management. We'll get back to you in two minutes. Waste has been a highly mounting issue on our planet. Many countries have invested many of their resources trying to find a solution for this shifting global dilemma. Experts say that the problem of waste is a management difficulty. By management, experts mean the collection, transport, processing or disposal, managing and monitoring of waste materials. And accordingly, all waste materials, whether they are solid, liquid, gaseous or radioactive, fall within the remit of waste management. However, a dispute over this linkage between the problem of waste and its management has erupted between experts. Those who share a different standpoint argue that waste should be managed differently integrating the three R's into the management equation, reduce, reuse, and recycle. It is true that there are positive and negative aspects to the term. 
It usually relates to the byproducts of human activity, and waste management is generally undertaken to reduce their effect on health, the environment, or our aesthetics, which are the beautiful things we see. Waste management is a distinct practice from resource recovery, which focuses on delaying the rate of consumption of natural resources to make it more sustainable. Nevertheless, what is the role of governments in this regard? And what is the role of non-governmental organizations in promoting zero waste? The latter is a strategy promoted in Europe by environmental non-governmental organizations first, then governments and local authorities started to issue rules and regulations serving zero waste. Now what is the situation of zero waste in our region? Welcome back. So now we are joined by phone from Beirut by Dr. Ziad Abishakir, a senior engineer and the founder of Cedars Environmental. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, how are you? Thank, good, thanks. How are you? Great. So Dr. Abishakir, to start with, is the problem of waste only a management problem or do you think there needs to be a complete shift in the way that we deal with waste in the first place? Well, it's a, it's a, combination, of, uh, it's a combination of factors. Uh, management definitely is, is, one, uh, is one aspect. Uh, also regulations, environmental regulations, when it comes to waste producers that should be responsible for their own uh, waste produced. But most importantly as well is uh, research and development into new environmental technologies to deal with the various and complex wastes that are being produced as societies progress. So these three, these three factors, once they are uh, available at the same time, it could be uh, very effective in dealing or with uh, at least providing a zero waste approach to, to most societies. Mm -hmm. Is it possible, would you say, to reach zero waste and what, it would, what would it take in a country such as Lebanon? Uh, actually, believe it or not, we are very close uh, technically to achieving zero waste in Lebanon. Uh, see, every society, not just the Lebanese society, has six categories of waste. And when you say about uh, achieving zero waste, are you achieving zero waste in these six categories or in one category uh, at a time? Mm -hmm. uh, very briefly, these categories are uh, municipal solid waste, slaughterhouse waste, medical and pharmaceutical waste, so that's three. Uh, you have wastewater, which is also a huge problem, and this should be considered a, a major waste issue that needs to be uh, dealt with. And then you have industrial waste and construction and debris waste. Mm -hmm. Let's so, say we talk specifically about municipal solid waste. How close would you say we are to achieving zero waste in this area specifically in Lebanon? Well, very humbly, I would say that Cedar Environmental, uh, the, the, our uh, research and development organization, has developed all the required technologies to achieve zero waste on the municipal solid waste levels. Mm -hmm. So now we have a way to deal with organics without uh, dumping or, or uh, burning them. Uh, we have uh, developed technologies to deal with plastic bags and how to uh, manage them into uh, durable uh, products. So uh, from a technical point of view, uh, we can be very assured that we have reached zero waste level and municipal solid waste. Now what needs to be done is to spread this technology as much as possible over the territory. Mm -hmm. How positive do you think the reception has been to, to these different technologies? I don't think uh, people or uh, municipalities, let's say, because they are the main, uh, the main uh, players in this, uh, in this issue, they're not concerned about the technology as much as they are concerned about solving the whole waste issue and getting it off their hands because they are really squeezed for space and uh, they are demographically expanding so they cannot afford huge land to do landfills. So now they are more aware about the necessity and the urgency of recycling, but they are not getting into the nitty gritty details of how we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. So if we continue as we are today in terms of waste disposal, where does it look like we're headed? Well, if we keep on dumping and landfilling, we're, we're heading uh, towards a really big problem. 
but I'm, I'm kind of confident that uh, we will not go there because of several factors, uh, most of which are financial and real estate uh, and real estate dependent. Uh, municipalities know now that they cannot sacrifice land and their only choice is to go through recycling or, and or building recycling units and recycling factories. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look that gloomy, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Abi Shakir. We'll be going back to our guests in the studio, uh, Dr. Dania Bid. So in terms of uh, the new environmental technology that Dr. Abi, Abi Shakir was talking about uh, specifically right now, uh, how effective do you think this can be? And do you think that people will uh, accept it in terms of you know, implementing it mm -hmm. on a wider scale in Lebanon? Uh, I, t I totally agree that technically speaking we are ready mm -hmm. I mean there are many there are techniques ready for all all kind of uh, of waste uh, but f passing from uh, technically to what's happening uh, really I uh, this will this will take enough much time I think in, mm -hmm. in my opinion uh, but to say to say the truth that many uh, Examples. We have many good examples, positive examples that that happened around us. Uh, now, everywhere you go, you can see people segregating their waste, mm -hmm. and this helps a lot to go to towards uh, towards recycling. Uh, something important today. They uh, they speak about uh, reduce, uh, reuse, uh, recycle. Mm -hmm. uh, today we ha we added even two other th R's. One is buy recyclables, and this is something that we find it uh, much. If you go to anywhere, you can find uh, recyclable papers, for example, and, and some other uh, some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And is this only in bigger stores or only in more? Uh, uh, yes, yes, but it it uh, some some years ago we couldn't even find them. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this is something important uh, important today. Uh, for example, uh, speaking about papers, many people today think of uh, doing their business cards on recyclable mm -hmm. uh, papers, and this is uh, and this uh, this helps. Uh, and what the fifth R is also rethink. People are, are are rethinking the way they are seeing the waste. Waste is something that nobody can use mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, but uh, there is a, there is a big difference between something that I don't want to use and something that's not usable anymore, or nobody can can uh, can use it. So we see many people reusing uh, the clothes or recycling the clothes, giving them to some others. Uh, we see many uh, many people thinking of buying glass instead of plastics. Many people thinking of buying. Uh, environmental uh, plastic bags the ones that uh, that are biodegradable than the normal uh, normal uh, ones you can see people uh, reusing the bag twice and three times and four times and they can even see it in uh, in the supermarkets and today there is something important in the supermarkets that you can see there are some kind of uh, machines where you put uh, some kinds of uh, plastic bottles or aluminium uh, aluminium uh, bottles and uh, you uh, you are paid back with uh, with, uh, with some units let's say and whenever you uh, you gather these units you can have uh, you can have a special gift mm -hmm. and uh, this gives us hope that uh, people are ready to segregate and they are ready to make this effort to segregate their waste and to treat their waste in a different uh, in a different uh, way. Uh, lately, we went to the Beirut Marathon, and you could see at the end of the marathon, you know, marathon people would uh, would run a lot, etc. But they also drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. and, uh, and in many points, you can see people gathering these uh, these plastic uh, plastic bottles, and uh, they give a very positive uh, po positive feed feedback that the mentality. Uh, in which we are rethinking uh, our uh, waste is is changing and is changing much faster than uh, than uh, than we thought. So in a way, technically we are ready. Uh, people have uh, are thinking are thinking uh, differently. I think if we just have to change a bit uh, some laws and some major uh, ways of uh, managing the waste, we we are going in the good and positive and right direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're out of time, but thanks to Dr. Danny for joining us in the studio and to Dr. Abishakir for joining us by phone. This was Eco-Terrorism and I'm Zainab Beyoun. See you next week.